Have you been looking at investing in real estate? Maybe you've been checking out turnkey rental properties or looking into fix and flipping properties. If you have, you've probably understood there is a bit of an investor journey going from flipping houses to investing in rental properties. And then you might have heard about something where you can invest passively into real estate syndications alongside an experienced group. But in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the cons of why you shouldn't do this, right? Maybe you should just invest in little rental properties on your own. And then also, we'll also go into a little bit of the pros of it. But this is going to be from the other side of the coin. So first off, talking limited control here. When you're a passive investor, you're sitting back in coach of the airplane. And then that's the analogy that I like to use. These deals, they're structured where the investors up in the cockpit, your general partnership group, they're the ones who find the deals, they source the vendors, they bring in all the investors, and they fly the airplane. And when you come in, you lose control. If you've ever been in an airplane, and I know all of you guys have, you're not there flying the airplane. You're not making calls. And that can feel a little scary to people. I would say that's you just have to get used to it. You get a lot more diversification, which we'll talk about in the pros later on, but that's just calling it out. And number two here, investment illiquidity. This is generally a con of owning all real estate where you can't just, you know, take your property into the bank and get money for it. Like you can with stocks, bonds, mutual funds. You're going to have to wait a while to get money back. And it may not be there when you really need it. This is why a balanced portfolio is probably needed where you do have your, your short-term liquidity. A lot of investors that I hang out with, we do accredited investor banking, infinite banking for our short-term liquidity. And then your mid to long-term liquidity sources, which you likely will not need, are stored in real estate opportunities such as real estate syndications. And that's where it comes in. You've got to manage your way around this. You need to keep a certain amount of money on the sidelines in your short-term liquidity stores so you don't have to have this con really impact you when you're a syndication investor investing in private placements and syndications where you're going to have to wait till the project is completed, typically anywhere from three to five years. Moving on, next one. A lot of these deals have pretty high minimums, especially if you're a newer investor under $1 million net worth. The, in the world that I play around in, I see a lot of syndication deals with fifty dollars to $100,000 minimum investments. Why? A lot of these down payments and CapEx plans are going to be anywhere from $5 million to $15 million to buy a $20 to $50 million property. And therefore, if you could imagine, just do the math for yourself. If an operator sponsor is putting this deal together and they're bringing in people at $1,000 increments, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of investors and it's just going to be a little bonkers. Now, if you break that down, you're, now you're seeing why fifty dollars to $100,000 minimums is put there. Now, real estate institutions that are typically going to be owners of five, ten billion dollars $10 plus, and they also don't give you the, the, you, the investor the great returns to because of higher fees and worse LP investor splits, these guys will typically be around half a million million dollar minimums. Personally, a rule that I follow is I don't want to have more than 5% of my net worth to any one individual project, just in case you never know what's going to happen. On the other side of this, I think a lot of investors, at least they start off with crowdfunding websites, perhaps a great way to get started. I think there is a little bit of false sense of security about investing through one of these portals. Essentially, a crowdfunding website is just acting as a broker dealer. They don't have skin in the game. They are getting paid to connect people through their portal, which they've used their marketing to attract investors out there. Now, there, again, there is a false insecurity there. You as investors still need to do your due diligence. If you want to check out other videos of this topic, check out my YouTube channel. We go into this in great detail. But a lot of these crowdfunding websites, you can typically get in for a lot lower amount. However, again, you may not be getting the investor class that the investors are directly investing with the operator who are putting in $25,000, $50,000 minimum. So just be aware of that. Oftentimes, if you're on the outside getting started, you're probably not aware of this happening behind the scenes. Next up, 
it's just different from investing in rental properties. Now, a lot of investors, myself included, I started off with little rental properties, eventually owned 11 turnkey rentals out of state. And I was good at that, right? You find a property manager, you have the property manager market the property, you fix up things along the way, and you're off and rolling. Now, when you get into the syndication private placement world, the game kind of changes for you. It's not so much that you're doing the work, putting all the people in the right places together, but you're the one kind of deciding where to put your money with whom. So it becomes this big trust game. When I first started investing in private placements and syndications back in 2016, I really didn't know anybody in this world. Like I was not a credit investor. None of my friends or family were millionaires. So it was really hard for me. And I went around to a lot of so-called events and conferences to meet a lot of people. But it was really hard because it, I just couldn't really figure out the difference between who was legit out there and who was good at internet marketing. I eventually invested with a few of these shysters, um, one person that outright stole my money and another few people who were just total fake it to you make it people who spend more time making YouTube videos and social media headshots on themselves and actually operating the property. Now, this is again, where I keep coming back to in finding other purely passive investors out there, but that's the hard thing, right? If you're starting out, you likely don't have people in your network for this. Here at our club, we create that community of other minded, accredited, purely passive investors for you to meet if you were to join our group. Now, that's the biggest thing, and that takes the longest time, right? But it's just a mind shift change. It's less you doing things, and it's you more schmoozing with people and building organic relationships with other passive investor colleagues. The next one kind of goes hand in hand with your limited control, right? You don't have operational control of what's happening. You don't really have a say if you're getting to the end of the business plan and if you should inject a little bit more money to eke out more returns, or you should just prematurely sell. That's up to the general partner or sponsor team to make that best decision. I would probably argue that the general partnership team, you would want to work with people who have this as their full-time job, not their little side gig, because then you're putting this trust into them that they know the market best, right? Passive investors may have an opinion, but let's be honest, right? Passive investors are typically amateur investors who are doing this on the side. And in this case, to make big decisions that could go both ways, it's best to put the trust in people who are committed to this. And also, the cool thing about syndications and private placements is everybody from general partners down to LP investors are aligned in this. And going back to the analogy about their plane goes down, meaning the project goes bad, everybody suffers the consequences, right? Pilots find the plane, go down with the plane too. And lastly here, prerequisites for participation. Now, I think a lot of people, there's a little bit of misnomer out there thinking that you have to be an accredited investor to invest in private placements and syndications. The truth is most deals out there do require for you to have a relationship with the sponsor. You don't need to be an accredited investor, but you do need to be sophisticated. Now, what does that mean? There's no real definition on this about the SEC website. However, in my opinion, if you've owned rental properties before and you've been through the ups and downs and you understand the risks of real estate such as that, that would probably qualify you as a sophisticated investor at that point. And then you would allow to be into deals as a non-accredited investor. Now, there are some deals out there that are mass marketed. These are called 506C offerings. Now, these offerings allow the general partnership team, the sponsor, to mass market the project out there. But once they do that, they preclude themselves from bringing in sophisticated or non-accredited investors. Now, I think that this is the cause for the big misnomer out there, where investors are thinking that they need to be accredited investors to invest in deals. In reality, the deals that are being put out there, mass marketed, or the think of the iceberg that's sticking outside of the water, right? That's the part that people visually see. Those are the deals that are actively being marketed. And thus, those are the deals that only accept accredited investors. Now, again, like the iceberg analogy, most of the iceberg is underneath the surface, hidden away. And that is how most deals are being done through 506B offerings, where you have to be in the private network and know the syndicator or sponsor to get into those deals and offerings. 
you may not see them out there, especially if you're a new investor. That's because you need to expand your network and to become our part of an investor club who specializes in offerings such as that. So you can learn about these opportunities that are not mass marketed out there. And again, they're mass marketed. That is, again, where, where the general partner sponsor can only take in accredited investors. So those are the cons of the syndications, and you should never do them. Although, personally, I in, used to invest in single-family homes. I got up to 11 of them back in 2015. And shortly after that, when I started to learn about syndications and private placements from other passive investors who had a much higher net worth than I did, I started to listen, right? A lot of these investors were selling off their rental properties and going into more private placements and syndications for the passive component, also better deals, and for not having any of that legal liability there, not being the managing member. It also be able to create scalable cash flow. Now you can go into all kinds of syndications and private placements, some that have cash flow, some maybe more like development, which have no cash flow because you're building an asset in the meantime, but have a bigger pop and upside at the end. The other cool thing about syndications and private placements is they seem to be a lot more tax efficient. When I bought my first property, $350,000 out in Seattle, I could write off the property improvement portion of, of my asset over 27 years. So I would take the home improvement portion, which is about $200,000, divide it by 27. And I could take that about $7,000 in losses every single year to offset my passive income there. Now, with syndications and private placements, you can do what's called a cost segregation, which typically costs about five to $10,000. Obviously, that is a huge waste of money if you're doing that on your little rental property. But on a larger syndication deal, say $20, $30 million, paying that little fee can unlock a much higher amount of passive losses earlier in the deal. To learn more about this, and yes, you can even do a cost segregation on your little rental properties. There is a little bit cheaper version. You can go to simplepassivecashflow.com slash cost seg to learn more about that. Going back to the high level, why do you need this? Instead of 27 long years, it, when you do a cost segregation in a syndication, you're able to take one third of all the losses in the first year. This may be about 10 to 20 times as bigger than what you would get on a rental property in the first year alone. Now, what this does is creates a surplus of passive activity losses, which you can use to offset other passive income you may have, or if you're able to employ another cool tax strategy called real estate professional status, you might be able to use these passive losses to offset your ordinary income. So I've got a lot of doctors that make $600,000 and they'll use this to drive their AGI from $600,000 down to $400,000. And at a savings of 50 cents to every dollar, that's $100,000 tax savings right there. Now to learn about more of those strategies, you can check out other videos on the YouTube channel or check out my mega guide at simplepassivecashflow.com slash tax. But to close this video out, you know, pros and cons, not for everybody, certainly not for lower net worth investors. If you want to learn more and you want to get access to my free e-course, simplepassivecashflow.com slash syndication to learn more. Or if you want to get access to that, send us an email at team at simplepassivecashflow.com or join our club at simplepassivecashflow.com slash club to get access to a lot of other cool resources we have. If you're a podcast listener, check out my podcast, Passive Real Estate Investing via Simple Passive Cash Flow, found on iTunes, Google Play, and then also join up on our community and check out my book on Amazon. I believe we've got almost 200 reviews at this point. I'm getting ready to launch my second book here later this year. Would love for you guys to get involved in our community before we go out and for that big launch so you guys can come out and launch with us. Again, thank you all for listening. If you got any questions, please type it into the comment box below. I'll be sure to answer it. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.